be able to uh, see exactly where we're at uh, going into that Wyoming game. So uh, today we actually had a practice that uh, was kind of a resemblance of a Thursday practice. We did it a year, a week ago, but this week we really did it. Uh, then we'll go through a little uh, tomorrow, kind of a Friday routine for what we normally do, even though it's on a Sunday. And then Monday will be our most uh, um, basically live approach to what a, a game day will be like. We'll have a move the ball scrimmage. Um, uh, do a lot of situational football, do all four phases of the kicking game as well as uh, field goal and, and field goal blocks. So we'll really get a lot of good work on Monday. Couldn't be more excited about just the way our guys have approached the first two weeks. Uh, just an update on the roster, Re really, um, you know, and in my entire career. So when they implemented the 110 rule, which basically means you can only invite 110 guys to camp, you know, I have a roster uh, that ranges from 118 to 120. Uh, we had to come up with a 110 roster, and, and uh, literally uh, two days ago was the first time I've had to make a substitution. Luke uh, Ford isn't able to practice with us for the next week, but he should be back with us if everything goes forward on the uh, Sunday of, of game week when we start classes, and that allows us to jump our roster back up to 118. So uh, brought Trenelli in today, uh, but really that's the only alteration to the roster that we've had to have uh, the whole time. So I'm excited that we've been stayed – um, pretty healthy. Um, guys have had some bang ups, some injuries in between there, but for the most part, we've had uh, no issues with anybody um, of such substance uh, that is going to be anything. Um, the only guy coming into camp was Sean Miller, who had a shoulder, uh, and then T. Ra actually had more work today. He hasn't been fully cleared, but T. Ra worked with us today uh, as full as he's ever been, and I expect him to join us full capacity next week as well. So uh, coming into it as, as healthy as we can two weeks out. Um, uh, and, and we'll see. Uh, the one thing I probably can complain about, and a lot of people probably don't want to hear it, is uh, I wish the weather was a little warmer, uh, a little, little uh, uh, more realistic of this time, uh, and especially what it could be in the uh, opener against Wyoming and obviously the, the weeks preceding that. So, of course, on the back end of it, I'll be complaining in November that I wish it was warmer as well. So I'm a little bit of give and take. But uh, I know we're on a limited window, so I'll open it up for some questions. Yeah, he's a medical situation that he just, um, you know, I th I, if all goes well and everything stays in plan, uh, there, there shouldn't be any issue with him being back with us. The, uh, I had a conversation with him yesterday. Um, but the way the numbers work out, if we have, um, you know, if we, we, we dip down like we're doing Luke, like uh, Friday we did um, uh, basically about a, maybe a quarter of our practice was all Wyoming preparation. And for us to do that, we need to have look team members. We need to have guys that simulate, and that's why we need our maximum roster. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, last night we were in Sullivan, uh, Illinois. I was with uh, Josh at a, at a quarterback club, and um, uh, on the way back from there, I had uploaded some video because I wasn't able to watch it, and I was watching our, our number twos, and out there on the field, Matt Bailey was at safety. Um, uh, we had two, uh, uh, two other freshman corners on the field at the same time, and um, in, in reality, there were guys that were probably – the latter additions to our to our signing class and and uh, Matt champions that moment. He's a guy that since he's arrived has been very very um, uh, easy to coach. Uh, his football IQ, his presence, his awareness. A lot of our guys. I'm not trying to tag him with a nickname, but a lot of our guys call him Sid 2.0. Um, uh, just kind of the personality, demeanor, behavior. Uh, a lot of the traits that Sidney has you can see in Matt. And and uh, excited where he is at this point. Yeah, yeah, good clock out. So there hasn't been any change uh, for for solo. Um, uh, don't don't it hasn't become official yet, but uh, we're still trying to make an appeal for him. Um, I think as as long as it's gone on, I, I'm not feeling great about the situation. But for for what solo brings and and through practice, he had a nice pick the other day. Uh, just an incredibly uh, uh, blessed moment for him to join us. Right, like kind of came out of nowhere. Um, he was at. Uh, Hawaii been at Baylor before that, so we're kind of working through the process there. But uh, I'm really excited to have him on our roster. Gabe Ax, yes, um, Gabe is uh, uh, just literally approved every day. I showed a play uh, the other day in scale or in seven on seven. Or actually, it was nine on seven, um, where he was the edge of our defense, and he actually made a tackle for loss. Uh, but was by the hair of his chinny chin chin. I, I I put it up for vote. I said, how many guys think he'd make this play? All the defensive guys raised their, their hand. All the guys that uh, were watching running back bounce and play, they all thought he was going to outrun it. So, uh, But I did show him a lot of times on the end man line of scrimmage, he, if you open your hips and go flat, you'll make the play every time versus try to go up the field. And literally the next play, I'm sorry, the next day, 
the same situation uh, came up and he flattened his hips and ran down the line of scrimmage. It was just like textbook. So like it really just, it's everything Kevin Kane has said uh, and working with him, any detail you give him, uh, he gets it right. But today was kind of a classic example. We were, the way Thursday practice or today's practice would work, we would go um, two, two series of, or I'm sorry, two periods of football, then a period of, Indi of uh, special teams, two periods of football, uh, and, and then a period of special teams, and it kind of rotates that way. Uh, and Gabe just had concentrated on football, but we were working on our kick cover unit, and he wasn't out there, and he was down on the other end of the field. And so I, I uh, waited for him to jog all the way down, kind of get embarrassed in front of everybody. Uh, and as soon as he got there, I put the other guy in and let, let the drill go. So he just kind of had to learn that moment, uh, which is for a reason. And I, I couldn't be uh, uh, saying enough good things about him, especially him and Matt Bailey would probably be the two leading candidates for, for freshmen to play on defense for sure. You know, um, well, Ryan obviously has been with us for a year, and I just continually um, see the little details of what he does on a daily basis, not just uh, not just X's and O's like a lot of people think of coordinators that they're uh, – and, and they do have a huge responsibility of X's and O's. But uh, Ryan, the way he handles our staff, the way he handles our players, uh, the way he handles recruiting, um, uh, just personal interactions. A lot of times I'll have coordinator meetings. It'll be just me, Barry, and Sean now, and um, just the the – uh, Ryan really knows when to add to a conversation, but uh, like sometimes I'll ask him for input or, or thoughts and he'll literally say, hey, I don't think I know enough of that moment. I'm going to stay reserved and, and pull out of this conversation. And to have that presence in a way, a lot of people in that position love to hear themselves talk and, and uh, Ryan's the exact opposite. Barry, um, I'm sure some of you probably saw we put out, we've, we've done a lot of videos welcoming our, our, our guys that potentially could be coming here in the future. A new NCAA rule allows us to do that. and. Uh, Elon had a hat on. It was a little, little jacked up. So I, I quickly sent that in a text message to our football staff, and I said, "Can we get him a hat that doesn't look like he's asking for change at the stoplight?" You know, and and just just the I, I really wanted to zing him in front of the crew because he's got that dry sense of humor, um, and and his input, uh, his impact on our players, his impact on our staff, uh, you know, is really been dramatic. I would say that you know I know a lot of you are just waiting to ask the quarterback question. I, I would say that. Art and, and, and Tommy probably have had the most complete week of, for sure, the last two weeks of practice since I've been here. Um, Art has really, you know, been really good here the last, uh, you know, five, six days. I think that arm's feeling better than ever. And, and Tommy has really continued to uh, process how we want to play the game and, and go through the adjustments he had. And I give that all the credit in the world to Barry. Yeah. You know, Barry's a very selfless person, right? He's, it's never about Barry Loney. He's always about the team. Uh, I think he grew up in a home, right, with his dad as a Hall of Fame legend coach, um, that, that uh, it, it's about the people around you that are important. And Barry demonstrates that on a daily basis. Um, he, uh, he did mention that his uh, son was in youth football as a backup quarterback. He didn't have a problem with it, but Janelle did. Uh, so um, I think he always defers to his family life, which makes him very human. Um, he gave a talk in front of our players. Uh, at the beginning of camp, I let our coordinators start it off and just the humility that he presented himself with, but also a lot of kids didn't know his background, his history, uh, how much he had accomplished as a player, and but also the adversity that he faced. He talked about, um, some of you may or may not know his history, he was a multi-year starter, was benched at the beginning of the year, put in and replaced, uh, and then was called upon in that first game to come back. and. and, and uh, it was not a great situation, uh, the result, and he was faced with a tough moment and then went on to win the SEC. And, and like, um, it, the guy has just battled through perseverance, and I think our coaches can relate to that too. Like Barry Loney uh, had a tremendous effect, I think, on Bart Miller. He has a tremendous effect on, on, on Gio. I think he had a, a great rapport right away with uh, – he was a high school coach and Corey Patterson was a high school coach, so that automatically bonded up there together. Um, uh, just his ability to communicate and work with people of all ages is pretty good. Um, well, I doubt, I can't, I can't say for sure, right? But if you ask any of our players about predictions, they probably won't give you one today uh, just because I think they follow the model of what I believe in. Like, the only thing you can do is control tomorrow. And, and I do think we're a better football team than we were uh, going into fall camp a year ago, offense, defense, special teams. I don't know if that's going to correlate into more wins. I think their expectations and the understanding of what we're saying as coaches is at a higher level. Uh, I think there's a buzz in that building that uh, in the Smith Center that, 
um, you know, they know where they're at. They begin to feel and understand uh, the way they can play. And I'm excited to see it as far as, um, uh, you know, predictions or, you know, I leave that to the outside world. I've said all the time in my coaching career, and this was, you know, at one point when we were being picked to play first in, a, in our division versus uh, last year where I think we were uh, 14 out of 14 by certain people in the, in the, in the conference. And um, my, my expectation will always be the same and my prediction will always be the same. We're going to try to get better every day. You know, so um, the Smith Center, the way it lays out, my office sits on the uh, corner there, and I can literally watch our guys come and go every day. They park over in State Farm and walk. Um, well, the ones that park legally, some of them uh, tend to park illegally uh, in, in meters they shouldn't. But um, I, I a lot of times get to watch the, the bodies. Uh, and when I say that, I, I, I like to watch the interaction. I see who walks in together, who walks out together, how they're interacting. Uh, and this morning I was sitting up there early morning uh, having a cup of coffee, kind of Got up for a minute, I looked outside, and I saw uh, Dylan Davis uh, walking uh, with Cody Case, right? So um, two transfers that had never known each other until literally the latter part of summer because both of them came in late. And the way they were laughing and carrying on, like I don't know what they were talking about, but, um, you know, two completely different kids. You know, Dylan's from Florida. Cody's from, from uh, small town Iowa. Um, they both play offense, so I don't know if it was something going on about offense, but there was a genuine interaction there that was sincere and real, and I think that part's, for me, very, very awesome to watch. Uh, I thought Jonah Miller probably the last uh, three or four days has had his best performances. I'm not saying he's uh, by any means, you know, um, uh, proven himself or set himself in a, in a mode, but, like, he's definitely grown, and I think that's because he's around players that have shown him what, they, what he needs to do to do a better uh, job. And, um, that goes on all over the place, um, and, 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 and that probably gets me excited. I think this portal world, if you use it correctly um, and try to do your due diligence, you can really try to help your roster in a short amount of time. How many married players have had? How many married players I've had? <laughs> I don't even. What, what viewers? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. I, that's great. I have no idea. I, I, I would be lying if I told you. I like. I think there's. Um, I, I, I think Tip is – it's a great question. I think Tip feels better now that he's married. Like, he comes in and talks to me all the time about coaches and married being great. I go, absolutely, uh, <laughs> Tip. Um, uh, and I just think he uh, – for him and who he is and where he's at at that moment, like, it helped him kind of solidify himself a little bit. And he's definitely playing really good football. Um, I think certain guys, uh, you know, like uh, uh, V actually got married after we came here, right? Um, but I always used to tell pro scouts when they came in, you know, when I came in and met Vidarian Low, like um, I think everybody should strive to be a little bit like V, right? Like he um, uh, was married to a woman that he, you know, no, he hadn't even married her at that point, but he had two kids because he loved her, right? Um, he adopted his little brother because of the, the situation they were in. And um, he literally would come and tell me, he goes, Coach, can I uh, get out of here in time to go help my wife while she gets a chance to go to the grocery store? And, and then I'll be back for meetings, like just the maturity that he had. So I think a lot of kids, especially early in their life, I know I wasn't ready, right? That's why I waited. Um, some guys aren't really set for that moment, but I think uh, for sure Luke is, or, or Tip is. There was no doubt in my mind he was. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I'm not a big uh, um, – like we don't have camp weights they got to come in at. I've, like I've never literally had that as a coach. I think you got to um, understand like we do a lot of uh, testing. We do a lot of um, uh, uh, basically technology tank and his crew to work on what we feel a player's ideal weight would be at. And, and, and Calvin just gradually began to uh, descend down to the weight that we see him at today. And he's literally uh, in a better place. On Monday he had a scrimmage. It was pretty impressive. Um, uh, just to be uh, fully transparent, he did get dinged up the other day and hasn't been able to uh, practice the last two days, uh, but will be cleared and, and ready to go. He's only out for three or four days, right? So, like, if somebody's out for a, an extended period of time, then we sub them out on the roster. But uh, Calvin uh, should be back with us sometime mid next week, and I'm excited to get where he can go because he, he truly, uh, when he's playing the way he's capable of playing, he can be a, he can be a player that's very disruptive. To baby step forward? You know, um, 
of course we need good players to step forward. And, and the thing I kept challenging with, I coach defensive line in the league, right? And I would tell them, like, there's guys that are like you that, um, you know, definitely have the same characteristics and traits and athleticism you have, but you got to decide if you want to play at that level um, with consistency. And I think Calvin's taking a step in the right direction. Uh, I think his teammates have to feel that same way, right? Um, and definitely his coaches. But, yeah, I'm, I'm excited where it's trending. Uh, in the first two weeks, it's really the communication. It, it really, truly is. I know it sounds like that's probably not the answer everybody wants, but like when I say something, I think it really, truly is understood, right? Um, I talk to our players a lot of times. Anybody can regurgitate our words, right? As coaches, my guess is when you guys get done interviewing them today, I'll read the press clippings tomorrow, and uh, Brett will put a note in my box, and he'll give me examples of um, things guys say, good, bad, and different. And my guess is they'll they'll – They'll say a lot of things we say as coaches, um, uh, but anybody can just say things. It's whether or not they believe them. And I, I and I just see so many things that what we say and what we talk about become reality um, without us really stressing about it. And and uh, what really becomes transparent to me is when when we see our players enforce those things to new players, right? And and uh, people that haven't been in our program, they understand what tough, smart, dependable means. They understand to be the best you. Um, they understand you know, the facets of what we built this program on and what we're trying to strive for. Uh, you know, just a, just a simple thing. Uh, we talk a lot about situational football. Um, and, and Josh has afforded us, you know, like I'm sure you see that grass field is nice. We also have a new uh, clock system for us that has allowed us to play situational football at an unprecedented level. I can literally say, hey, give me 16 seconds on the clock. I did it today three times that wasn't scripted where I could say, hey, give me, give me 28 on the clock, end of game scenario or end of half. Um, and because of the structure around us, it's allowing us to practice at a higher level of, of performance. And, and, and all those little things, our program is just in a better state to accomplish what it needs to to win, win football games than ever before. I got a question about special teams. Uh, kickoff return last year. Yeah. So three total kickoff returns, 18 fair catches. Fewest in the league, you know, I was looking at the stats today, Appalachian State returned 42. They were running them up. What's your philosophy on that? Obviously, the fewest in the nation that's intentional mm -hmm. fair catch. What's your philosophy on kickoff return? Yeah, it's a great question. So, uh, twofold, I think that to, to, to establish a kickoff return um, philosophy, you have to gauge it off your kick returner, right? And um, last year we had several guys back there. I just didn't know if we had ourselves in a position that we could affect the game in a positive light. So, if you catch the ball inside, um, uh, let's say the five yard line and back, you're guaranteed to get the football. You're guaranteed a 20 yard return. Even your best kickoff return units last year aren't averaging much over 20 yards, right? So to catch the ball on the four yard line and assume you're going to have a great return and get it to 24, you're still a yard shorter than you were if you had just signaled for a fair catch. Uh, on the flip side of it, uh, on a couple of returns that we did have, we had penalties, right? So not only now uh, that we returned the football, we didn't get it to 25. Now we're also set back because of a penalty. So we weren't in a position last year, in my opinion, to uh, wager enough leverage to say that we can catch the ball inside the 10-yard line, basically inside the five, and get it to advance past the 25 with any type of consistency to give our offense a chance to be successful. Um, if, you, if you start a possession inside a 20-yard line, you have a 1-in-30 chance of scoring, 1-in-30. And, and that's the thing that I have to overcome, right? Like for me, to guarantee we're going to have the ball past the 20-yard line by doing it ourselves was not in the, in, in the best order of our business uh, compared to just fair catch and taking the ball in 25. That's what it is. This year, obviously, um, I think we do have some dynamic return guys. I do think we have a, a special teams coach who he and I kind of got together on the same page and excited about where we're at. Where that plays out depends a little bit upon our – our uh, 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 game week preparation, but also who we have back there and who we're playing. Zach Chrysler. You know, that was a weird, um, I don't know if there's one exact moment because we were kind of waiting on NCAA clearance. Uh, the question was about Zy Chrysler. So Zy, Zy was a full qualifier out of high school, right? And we found that out um, through one of our bye weeks, I flew to um, his junior college. We were actually recruiting another offensive lineman. Uh, the offensive line coach at that time said, hey, this other kid's pretty good. I said, let me meet him. Uh, so I met Zai. He was in the office, quick shook his hand. But I was under the impression that he had, to, he, he had another year in junior college before he could come out and get his AA. 
um, well, the way the things proceeded and, and happened, that offensive tackle we were recruiting, we never got him on campus. He had an official visit set. Uh, the powers that came, he, he went a little south, we'll say. Um, uh, and then, um, you know, I, I followed up on Zai, and then they're like, Coach, he's, I believe he's a full qualifier. Well, we checked NCAA, and, and, and uh, the powers that be hadn't labeled him as that, so we went through a filing system through our, our university and the people we – Actually, a lot of people started calling us because they knew he came on an official visit. So they were looking out for us, telling us that we were visiting a prospect that couldn't be on campus because he was a non-qualifier. And we quickly said, let us do our job, you do your job, right? Um, all of this was taking place during kind of a dead period. Uh, so I just continued to press and move forward. I remember Zai, uh, the way it kind of worked out, um, Zai was actually in transition to be here. He was already on campus, and we flew down to his home and met uh, we'd met mom, um, but we hadn't met everybody, and that whole town came out. I think I told you the story, right? The mayor came out. So I don't know if there was ever that one moment. Zaya told me several times, I'm coming, uh, but there was a lot of people who were trying to get in play at the last second, so I don't know if there was that one defining moment of high fives for everybody. Uh, but I would tell you, um, Zaya always comes by me every day. He'll give me a little dap. Um, I thought he had an incredible pull and an inside drill the other day, and I kind of made a big deal about it. Um, he's really playing at a high level. Uh, he's just scratching the surface of what he's going to be. He's a guy that's come down from about 360, a little over 360. Now he's in the, in the 335 range. Um, so his body is, is, is dramatically changed, and, and uh, I think just scratching the surface of what he's going to be. Right, thank, thank you. you. Yep.